Hey yo, what's up and welcome, I'm the one and only West Coast King and welcome back to the Minnesota United career where season number two, at least the regular season portion of it, is winding down. We have nine games left to play and we know what our objective is. Catch Atlanta and take home that supporter shield. Atlanta claimed it last season, I want to take it from them this year. We're four points back. We have two games in hand though. I'm assuming it's going to be those two games this episode midweek, Houston and Montreal. Unfortunately, I'm going to be simulating those two games. So we'll see how the team does. That's probably going to be reserve sides as well. That's going to suck. Uh, there's no good way to go about this. Four of those five games are going to be on the road as well. The only home game in this little portion right here is against Montreal. So yeah, that that's going to be rough. Very, very rough. And to round out the regular season, next episode, Colorado, Seattle, Dallas, and Vancouver. Some pretty good teams in there as well. So let's not waste any time today. Let's jump right into this first match. And it's probably going to be the most difficult match of the day. We're headed to Providence Park in Portland. Even though technically it's not Providence Park in FIFA. That's one of the probably one of the stadiums I most want to see though added to the next FIFA. Providence Park in Portland. Children's Mercy Park in Kansas City and probably Red Bull Arena, but that's a conversation for a completely different video. Sorry for getting off topic. Let's focus on what we have to do on the field here. We're 11 points clear of Portland. They're in third place, technically tied for second on 42 points. We're well clear of them. We're, well, I'm not really worried about anyone catching us. We're just focused on Atlanta. To catch Atlanta, we have to pick up points. I want to win this game. I don't know if it's going to be possible. Portland's very, very good, but I think we have it in us. All right, here we go. Kickoff against Portland. And I got the cut scene before this game again for Kevin Molino. I'm guessing that means he's still the leading scorer in the league, which I have a hard time believing, seeing as how he didn't score last episode. I, I know that for sure. And I, I don't even remember the last time he did score. So maybe maybe he's pro poised for a big game here today. Come on, Nicholson. Oh, Nicholson, nice move there. Nicholson coming through the midfield. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm not sure what he just did there. That's not what I wanted him to do. But he's got it back now. Nicholson. Nice little burst of pace from Nicholson. That's what I like about him. Cuts it in. Looking for Ramirez. Oh, he nearly snuck it by Atanella. That was so close. Nicholson's on one today. I like it. I like the energy from Nicholson up the wing. Here we go. Nicholson looking for the spin move here. Doesn't quite get by that man, but that's okay. Now he's, he's still on it. He's still on it. Nicholson, still on it. Somehow, I said Nicholson was on one today. I said he was looking good. I liked his energy. He just plowed through, forcibly plowed through, the entire Portland defense, and somehow found a shot, bangs it off the post, and in. Sam Nicholson doesn't contribute a whole lot with goals. More known for his assists and playmaking, but that was one hell of a play from Sam Nicholson. What a finish as well. Atanella, no chance. 1-0 at Providence Park. Here we go. That was a little bit risky playing that out, but we're okay. For Jauzinho. Ramirez. Back for Jauzinho. Beautiful play. Jauzinho looking for a ball in. Somehow found Ramirez. Molino! How did Molino score from there? Wow, what a strike from Kevin Molino. And that is the 2-0 lead you're looking for. I don't think Portland's getting back in this one. They haven't had a shot yet. And it's 52 minutes into the game. They, they haven't even had one shot. They haven't even come close. Good ball in from Jauzinho. It kind of banks off of Ramirez. Kind of takes a deflection there. Molino just says, yeah, I got this. Little spinning 180 bangs it into the near post. Wow, what a finish from Kevin Molino. Good play for just get that thing out of there. Ramirez actually wins that ball and plays it forward for Jauzinho. Here we go. This could be three. I've got subs ready to come on. Jauzinho across, and there is Christian Ramirez. Ramirez, Jauzinho, and Molino are all about to come off. That's not true. Ramirez is staying on. Either way, Jauzinho and Molino are about to come off, and they just go ahead and make it 3 0. Why not? I might as well. I mean, Portland have been absolutely abysmal all game long. They have finally had a shot, though. Didn't come to anything. We hit him immediately on a counterattack and get the third goal. Wow. I, I did not expect Portland to be this bad. I thought they would really be a lot better than this. And that is the final whistle. 3-0 in Portland. 
I honestly didn't expect that. I, I really, really didn't. I, I usually struggle against Portland regardless if I play them at home or on the road. They didn't put up a fight at all. Like, nothing. At all, nothing. They did nothing in that game. That was pretty easy. One of the easiest matches I've had in a very, very long time. I know we beat Toronto 4-1 last episode, but they got the opening goal in that one, and they dominated the first half. Portland did nothing. We absolutely dominated start to finish, and the scoreline reflects that pretty well. That was just easy. So before we get into the next match, I was sitting there on the simulation screen. I am going to sim this one against Houston. And I, I was looking at the players and the numbers, and I forgot. Somehow Christian Ramirez's number got switched. Thank you to whoever it was that pointed that out in the comments of last episode. He should be number 21. I don't know how he ended up with the number 9. I didn't give him that number. I, I don't, I honestly, I don't really know what happened. So I'm going to put him back to the number 21. Apparently it has a sentimental meaning to him. So I definitely want to keep him with that number. It's my favorite number as well. So definitely want to have Ramirez with that number 21 on his back. So now that that has changed, we can go back to business as usual. Now we can go ahead and simulate this one against Houston. They have pulled themselves up off the bottom of the Western Conference. They're up to 10th place now. As Colorado has slipped down, and wow, Vasquez starting in there in place of said Christian Ramirez. Gets the scoring started early, like to see that. A win on the road for the boys. Jauzinho missed the pen, but he did score a goal anyway. And we do get all three points. Not bad. So with that win over Houston, that was one of the games that we had in hand over Atlanta. We now sit on 59 points after two wins today. Atlanta... Still sits at 57. They, they actually haven't won a game today. And we now are in control of the Supporter Shield race with a game in hand. Two points clear. We're looking good. We just got to keep up this form. We have really, really good form going right now. Just keep this momentum going. I think we got this. So now we head off to DC United. They are still in third place in the Eastern Conference, but they're 10 points back of Atlanta they're actually tied with fourth place New England now on 47 points so this is a big game for them trying to keep their playoff hopes alive they've had an unbelievable an unbelievable turnaround season I think they finished last or next to last last season in the east and now they're a playoff team so that has me a little bit worried I'm not really sure what to expect from them and on top of that we've had to rotate the team quite a bit we're into the third game now of this five game stretch and the team is going to be rotated a lot from here on out, I think. So, yeah, it's not the strongest team we can put out there, especially that defense, which is almost fully rotated. But that's really the best that we can do right now. We'll see how it goes. All right, here we go. Kickoff against DC United. And I can't remember if I've played them yet this series or not, but... For the most part, their team is mostly unchanged from what a normal DC team would look like. I mean, even Bill Hamid is still in the team, which is kind of surprising given the fact that almost every big-name star in the MLS at this point in the series is not in the MLS anymore. So, uh, yeah, it's pretty impressive for them. Wow, DC is actually playing very, very well. The one man i got to keep my eye on is that Zoltan Stiber. Is that how you say his name? He's having an... What the heck did we just do there? Why did we just give the ball back to Paul Ariola? I don't know. He's having an unbelievably good season for them, though. He's won one Player of the Month award, and he's one of the leading scorers in the league. So we got to keep our eye on him. Parks out for Nicholson. Molino for Ramirez. Ramirez back for Kevin. What the heck was that? That's the leading goal scorer in the league. What was that finish for Molino? Absolutely just skied it. For Molino. Good touch for Molino as well. Gets the pass off. It's going to be Nicholson. Can't beat Bill Hamid. Ooh, that's, we're not getting through this defense very easily. It's not like Portland at all. This is much, much more difficult. And even when we do, Bill Hamid's back there. That, that's not an easy situation. Let's just go straight forward for Ramirez. Oh, nice move from Ramirez. He's going to have the shot. And ain't no way Bill Hamid is stopping that one. That was a beautiful move by Ramirez with his back to the goal there. Gave a little shimmy. I think that was Opara on his back. No chance. No chance at all. As soon as he turned and he got by him. Nope. Nobody's stopping that. Not with the form that Ramirez is in right now. I mean, Superman is in full force at this point. That little stutter step. It was Birnbaum, actually, that was trying to mark up Ramirez there. No chance. Let's give this ball for Ramirez. Not really the person I want on the wing here. 
We find a ball. Somehow does get that to Molino. Hamid, what a save. Molino very nearly had his first goal of the game as well. All right. DC United's playing themselves into this game. I, I'm actually kind of happy they are because I, I want a little bit of a challenge here. Oh, that was so lucky he was offside. <laughs> I thought I just got absolutely dicked over by that deflection. That was so close. Uh-oh. This is... Ooh, that was a good play. Ball in the middle. Lobbed up. Calvo does just enough to put that player off. Yeah, DC's getting close. They're actually getting very, very close. I can't get the ball out of my own half right now, and their offense is looking very threatening. Here we go. Venegas. Oh! That was an interesting play. Ends up where I wanted it to. And there is Nicholson who finishes two goals today for Sam Nicholson. I'm not sure what's going on with him. I don't. I, he doesn't usually get up there and get in the box for goals like that, but I'll take it. You know what? That's fine with me. I, if he wants to score goals, far be it for me to stop him. Two goals in two games for Sam Nicholson and a 2-0 lead here in the nation's capital. And I think... That should be enough to seal this one. Boy, ball forward. Ramirez is going to get to that ball. Oh, that's not... What a pass! Oh, my God! Uh, that was... I Actually, I hit the wrong button. I meant to low cross that in. And instead, I did a lead through... Like a driven through ball. And somehow got it to Jauzinho, who almost hit an amazing first time shot on Bill Hamid. That was so close to being a third. Oh, no. Now we're getting counterattacked. Oh, no. That, that I'm going to end up paying for that, aren't I? Nope. That was an awful cross from, I think, Paul Ariola. What was that? Oh, that is <laughs> that is the final whistle. I don't know if you saw that, but I tried to rainbow flick Kemp down there. I'm not sure if it was going to work or not, but I was trying to just do him dirty because he's been doing me dirty the whole game. Kemp was amazing for them. Honestly, him and Hamid were so freaking good in that game. But it wasn't enough. Offensively, these teams just don't have enough at this point. With all the big names that are gone offensively out of the league, I don't know if we're ever going to give up a goal. Unless it's a complete just lapse in concentration or a complete fluke or something. Some weird deflection. I don't know if anyone's ever going to score against us, honestly. Yeah, it's just it's not very difficult anymore. Alright, so now we have, I think, our only home match of the month. And we're at home to take on Montreal, who are in 10th place in the Eastern Conference. Once again, slightly rotated team from us. We had a little bit of extra rest between games here, so a lot of the players can stay in there. Ethan Finley's benefiting from having ungodly stamina. I mean, he has like 80-something stamina, so he's never coming out. I'm rotating Jauzinho and Nicholson at this point. And I've also benched Ian Harks, because I just haven't liked the way he's played today. So I'm giving him a game off. This is looking pretty good, though. Calvo. Joven Jones, hey, you know what? If the defense wants to score and take over the load for a game, why not? I'm surprised Courtney Ford hasn't scored, though, if it's going to be a defender. And a 2-0 victory at home against Montreal. That, that's perfectly acceptable. All right, so I'm having a look at the standings here. We're 17 points clear of Vancouver now with five games left to play. That means that the Western Conference is done. We've already won the Western Conference. We can't get knocked out of first place. The only team within even shouting distance of us now is Atlanta. They're five points back with five games left to play. So, I'm going to go ahead and sim the next two games right now. That's going to be on the road against RSL, ninth place, and then at home against last place Colorado. If we win those two games and go up over Atlanta by more than nine points, that's the supporter shield done too, and I'm going to go ahead and sim the rest of the season today and we'll start the playoffs next episode so let's go ahead and do this right now i've already set the team up for this game against rsl again very very rotated in there so this is going to be sim number one we do have to go up by more than nine points so either we win and draw one and atlanta loses out doesn't really matter that pretty much ends that whole idea okay well that was unfortunate they went down to 10 men and then scored two goals against us what happened to that defense? All right, I'm still going to sim this one against Colorado because they're in last place. I'd sim it next episode anyway, so might as well get it out of the way here. Johansson is coming back to Minnesota to play. I know that's an interesting storyline, but honestly, this shouldn't be a problem for us. It, it We lost. What happened? We lost at home to last place Colorado. I think the team is getting a little bit complacent. I, I think that's what's going on here. 
what either they're either they're complacent or they're tired one of the two but either way it's not acceptable to lose like that at home to the worst team in the conference okay um that didn't go the way i had anticipated playing two of the three of the worst teams in the western conference i expected to win at least one of those games or at least get a draw somewhere in there not lose them both giving up four goals and scoring none that's not the way we operate typically but that does now put us back behind Atlanta United by one point with three games left to play. Uh, we'll start off next episode, which I guess we'll be playing all of, with a home match against Seattle, who are actually one of the hottest teams in the league right now. They have gone from eighth place up to sixth and are one point out of a playoff spot in the West. We finish off the season with Dallas and then a big, big match in the final match day of the season against Vancouver. That's scary, actually. I, I'm very worried about Vancouver and Freddie Montero because I'm not exactly sure how to stop him. He, he, I think he scored every game he's played against me. He's quite good. So, yeah. Instead of just cruising to the Supporter Shield this year, we have a lot of work left to do. So, that is it for this one. If you did enjoy it, make sure to let me know by leaving a like below. Subscribe if you're new. And I'll see you when we come back to finish off the regular season in season number two. See ya.